You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we have Adam Zane, the president and founder of Asia. They are a company focused on leading in the leading the world on what is possible with wireless power. Um, so their flagship product, Coda, is a technology that redefines wireless power by safely de- delivering remote targeted energy to devices at a distance. So we talk a lot about that. We talk a lot about the current state of sustainable power in IoT, why did wireless power take so long to come to market, uh, the perception of wireless power, whether it's you know possible and, and, and safe, um, and then where we kind of see this wireless power uh, initiative kind of heading in the future and what it really means for uh, consumer, enterprise, commercial kind of IoT uh, and the potential there. So a lot of very interesting conversations uh, kind of happened in this episode. Really think you'll get a lot of value out of it. But before we get into this, if any of you out there are looking to enter the fast growing and profitable IoT market, but don't know where to start, check out our sponsor, Leverage. Leverage's IoT solutions development platform provides everything you need to create turnkey IoT products that you can white label and resell under your own brand. To learn more, go to iotchangeseverything.com. That's iotchangeseverything.com. And without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome to the IoT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, yeah, it's uh, great. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to have you. Um, looking forward to this conversation. I think you guys have some very interesting things going on um, uh, at the company. So, so let's dive right in. Let's have you give a quick introduction about yourself. Talk about kind of background experience, anything you think would be relevant for our audience. Yeah, um, my name is Hatem Zain. I'm the founder, CTO, and president of Osia. Uh, we're basically bringing uh, real wireless power to the world. Uh, basically, the ability to, de- to deliver power to devices at a distance. So you'd never have to worry about pesky batteries or yeah. running expensive wires and, you know, in, in places where you don't want to see wires. So uh, we're trying to basically uh, relieve the, the IoT from the shackles of the ball and chain, I call them the battery and the, and the <laughs> wire, that enables us to, to really go ahead with deploying uh, the, the true value of I- IoT in the world. Yeah, that's fantastic. Anytime I have a founder on, I always love to hear a little bit more about kind of the story behind the company. So so what, what was um, kind of going on before the founding of this that kind of presented you with the opportunity that you felt was worth diving in and solving and starting a company around? Right. No, that's a great question. The The thing is that um, I don't believe that big major inventions happen because, you, you know, you you intentionally want to solve it. And mm. a lot of the, the, the best inventions we have, anything from, you know, the penicillin, the discovery of penicillin or the, uh, you know, plastics or um, uh, the uh, uh, post-it notes even, were all... Uh, you know, by by chance that they were they were sure. created, and uh, you know, from Asia's perspective, I'm a physicist by education. I studied uh, physics at Manchester University in England, and um, I've been working on technology ever since. But I've been uh, a software guy, if you like, uh, from even before going to college and uh, in, in, in the, the 80s and maybe late 70s. And uh, I started my first software company, and in the 90s. We started getting Wi-Fi for the first time, and Wi-Fi didn't really uh, deliver on the promise of 10 megabit, 10 meters at the time. Hmm. And I was thinking, like, from my physics knowledge and RF and so on, you should be able to improve that with adding more antennas into the the Wi-Fi hub so that you could, you know, increase the coherent right, signal right. at the receiver. So I came up with a, an algorithm from physics called retrodirectivity to try to improve the Wi-Fi signal. And I did some simulations. It showed like four or eight antennas would make would improve the signal greatly. And uh, if you look around today's Wi-Fi hubs, they all come with that kind of antenna structure. Mm. Um, but when I at the time, I thought, OK, what if you used like a 1,000 antennas in the system, in the Wi-Fi hub? It's a crazy idea. I, I was just you know messing around with the simulator. Right. But it showed that you, know, you could deliver a third of the radiated energy to a device at five meters away. So that's where the bulb came up. Like, you know, uh, Interesting. aha, this is this is beyond data right, communication. Right. And I uh, started pursuing what does this mean? And turns out that this invention that that uh, I came up came up along with actually had uh, uh, fantastic um, uh, uh, capabilities way beyond just delivering power at a distance. 
So, so let me ask then. So, we, you know, anytime we talked with other companies around areas of sustainability and IoT, we've talked about obviously the connectivity side. So, from my understanding, what this allows you to do is to power devices at a distance so that they can run without having to be plugged in or rely on battery power. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, okay. um, if, if you go back 20 years ago, how many devices in your home needed charging batteries yeah. and so on? You know, yeah. uh, we, we, we may have had a cell phone or two, maybe even like pages were being phased out at the time. Uh, right. There were remote controls. Um, very few things, like even if you installed a home security system, they would run wires at the time. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, and, um, to, you know, I would count, like, the number of devices with batteries or low power needs in the home mm -hmm. in 2020, in the year 2000, uh, probably around 10, 5 to 10 devices, if you can count the remote controls and things you have around the house. Today, uh, the number is about 100. Sure. Uh, if you consider home security system, every window cell, every... Uh, every door has a battery-powered sensor, right, the, right, right. Uh, you know, thermostats, uh, all kinds of devices we are having today really boost that number. And just about anything you buy these days comes with a battery and some communication uh, device. Right. Um, you know, think of Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi was invented, it was for laptops, for data communication. Today, most of the devices in my house connecting to Wi-Fi are not laptops, for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're, they're my, my uh, you know, video doorbell or... Uh, or right. uh, the home security system even, and uh, my set-top box, et cetera, all of these were uses we never thought of at the time. So, so let me ask then, when we're thinking of the application of this technology in certain industries for certain use cases, where have you seen kind of the most adoption and where is it kind of, what is it really aimed at, um, I guess, from a target use case standpoint obviously there are probably some use cases that this works really well in and other use cases it has its limitations around so so give us a couple examples of how this can be used in real world settings for a different industry or use case that you all have focused on just so our audience really can understand kind of the power behind what you built sure sure i, I will relate to a couple uh, although there are many um uh, turns out you know wireless power is for every iot device and um uh, if we want to look at the whole market, like, uh, you know, Cisco predicts there will be 500 billion IoT devices by 2030, and that's a, a published report by them. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about that if we are going to put batteries in those devices, we don't humanity doesn't build enough batteries for that many sure. uh, IoT devices. Even if you disassemble every car bat electric vehicle car battery and try to use those, so we we're really uh, way short of that figure. And if that's going to happen, if IoT is going to happen, it will require wireless power. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that we're using the, the people who need the technology are in every industry, you know, manufacturing, building management, smart cities, uh, retail stores, uh, infrastructure, distribution, sure. um, uh, consumer electronics. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll talk about retail stores and home, home usage. And that okay. gives you an idea about it. Okay, sure. So in, in a retail store, you, you know, one of the most popular uh, devices that are, we're seeing around in, su in supermarkets and other, other retailers is the advent of the electronic shelf labels, little price tags that are electronic devices that are showing the price of the goods as right. you walk around the store. Right. Now, these require batteries today. And um, in, a, in a retail store, let's say one of the big retailers uh, or supermarkets, you're going to have um, 30 to 50,000 of those devices, each one requiring three, uh, three to six batteries. Okay. So if you if you think of that, that's a hundred thousand batteries, in in in, in a store. Right. Where now, uh, you know, and these retailers have like a you know let's say five thousand stores across the United States. Right. So you're talking about suddenly you have five hundred million device uh, batteries, right? That will last two years. So every year they have to throw away two hundred fifty million batteries. Okay. And, and that becomes a, a major uh, sustainability sure. issue, but sure. also sure. manpower. Turns out that the manpower you're saving somebody walking around changing the price tag for the you know whole milk today, doing it on electronic uh, devices is easier because you you know in the headquarters they can press a button change the price, but if you want to change the batteries, you're going to spend the same amount yep. of. Uh, manpower just changing the batteries as if changing right. the paper price tag. Right, right, right. So this is where wireless power can come in and not only power all those devices and never having to worry about the battery in the whole store, 
but also enable other sensors like people sensors, temperature sensors and refrigerators, uh, uh, even HVAC sensors in the environment that can save a ton of power. But the uh, idea of having to put in, um, you know, tens of thousands of devices sometimes around the store actually ends up with, with a heavy burden on cost or manpower. So that's a, a major uh, solution that we, we have not talking even about the about the back, the back end of the store the distribution centers etc um now in the in the home um we have lots of devices our phones our um, right. wearables and so on what we really need is a is a system that you set and you don't have to worry about it so you don't need the one in every room you need something that uh, like wi-fi gives you good coverage Although uh, the, the power levels may be good enough for most of the IoT from room to room, mm -hmm. to really get power enough for a smartphone or a, or your wearables, you'd, you'd need to be in the same room. So you'd have to strategically place the transmitters yeah. in your room, in your house, right. uh, to, to get the benefit of it. But after that, you know, how many times did you uh, pick up your digital camera from the drawer and find out that you didn't charge it before you're mm -hmm. going on a trip? Or you know, or other devices like a flashlight or something. Right, right, right. The, the problem is that we have so many devices, we forget the count of them, and we forget that we need to maintain these batteries. We're not mm -hmm. like an enterprise where we have people doing this for us. And wireless power would really in, in, improve our life, you know, from uh, productivity, safety, uh, uh, health, uh, even and uh, comfort. So we're wireless power will enable us to deploy many more devices, and I anticipate. In our homes, we, we should reach about 500 devices in the next five to 10 years in our homes. So let me ask then, let's let's just take this through the, the, the home example here. Would the devices I have in my home have to be built to um, kind of accept this wireless char power charging kind of technology? Because for instance, obviously you can't take just any phone and put on a wireless charger, right? It needs to have some kind of uh, ability to, to and the components inside to work with wireless charging. So with this, would that be the same kind of situation where all the devices I have that are maybe a couple years old that don't have any wireless charging capabilities, would I, they need to be, have they, would this only work with devices that have some type of um, component inside that's compatible with, with your technology or, or how does that work? Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point, actually. If you think about, um, you know, when, when you bought a Wi-Fi hub to your home, not everything right. connected to your Wi-Fi hub, you had to right. buy equipment with Wi-Fi. Right. Um, but if you, it, it, maybe not many people remember, but 20, 25 years ago, you had to get uh, a PCMCIA card to plug into your laptop so you can connect to Wi-Fi. Sure. And so when we think of uh, adoption of wireless power, we're looking at it in four stages. Okay. The first stage is the uh, retrofitting stage. So for example, um, we, we uh, patented and are bringing to market with our partners uh, what looks like AA batteries and AAA batteries, but are actually uh, power receivers. So what, what happens is that you can take, get your remote control, put these batteries and then put them in the smoke detectors and so on. And these will receive power and run that device so you never have to change their batteries again. That's retrofitting. The next stage is integration, where the manufacturers would integrate the circuitry necessary for right. receiving wireless power into their devices. And that's the integration stage. You'll see more devices coming up that still have battery compartments. But if you don't have a, a, a quota transmitter, uh, quota is our wireless power system. Or right. you, you, you would have um, a device, or if you, if you have it, then you get used to use it or use the batteries compartment. Mm -hmm. The third stage is what we call the transformation stage. Um, like, uh, remember when uh, laptops, uh, you know, had integrated Wi-Fi? Right. The next right. stage was the loss of the Ethernet port and the modem port. And the laptops became thinner, maybe they got more uh, uh, better forms. That's the transformation stage that we anticipate is going to happen for all the uh, devices that we have. So gotcha. your remote controls will become thinner. There's no place for a AA battery. Uh, it, it, you know, your home security system will be much less visible, and yeah. etc. So all, all kinds okay. of things that this is the, the last stage is what we call the innovation stage, where people start using the wireless power for devices we never thought of could be possible. Mm -hmm. Like today's, uh, uh, you know, video doorbell or something like that. Yeah, sure. nope, nobody thought of that. But because it's possible, it became available. And, and the same thing will happen with wireless power. 
So let me ask you then, you know, obviously I'm, I'm sure anyone who has devices in their house and gets tired of all the cords and plugs being um, uh, plugged into the wall and just the general kind of pain that causes at times not being able to access something because it's, you know, the cords only this long and they're not sitting near it. <laughs> People probably thought about this idea forever and in just like the general life, like, God, I wish this was just charged while it's sitting next to me without having to do anything special. Why do you think now is... It, or why, I guess, why has it taken so long for us to get to the point where wireless power is something that can be available to the market? Kind of like this kind of takes it to more of a high level, the current state when we're thinking about sustainability, pa sustainable power in IoT. We've talked about uh, on other episodes, things like um, solar power and how that can power devices and energy harvesting and things like that. But, but as we're talking more about this wireless power piece, why do you think it's taken so long for us to get to the point where this is now possible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is something I've been thinking about as well. I think there are uh, multiple things that have had to happen for this uh, technology to be necessary. If you go 40 years ago, like you know, in the 70s and 80s, who wants wireless power? What, what are you going to wirelessly power your fridge or your 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 toaster? That's not important, but. What, what the first advent was the need, me having many, many devices in our environment. Having one or two doesn't require us to invent something totally drastic right. like wireless power. Right. The second one is that the uh, technology needed to, to create it requires high frequency. So we need okay. to be adept at, at, as, a, as a technology uh, economy of being able to work with the gigahertz and, and, um, and build systems that have hundreds or thousands of antennas at the cost that would be affordable. Now, 20, 25 years ago, we could just barely do this, but the, the cost would be so high. That, you know, would you buy a wireless power system for your home? It would cost half a million dollars. Not really. Now that the uh, integration and circuit design and the, the cost of building and designing those have come down, we're now mm -hmm. able to, to provide that to them. Uh, and the final thing is the invention itself, is the actually the solution. So. You may have heard that uh, you know uh, concepts like beamforming and uh, sure. MIMO are, are very common in today's uh, technology. Um, they basically come from radar systems, and radars were invented 90 years ago in in uh, Britain, just pre-war Britain. And uh, the uh, MIMO is something that came up from data communication. Now, MIMO is not really that relevant for wireless power, as it is more important for energy harvesting where sure. you're connecting microwatts not something that you would charge or we, would maybe be meaningful to most devices we use today right uh, very speciality uh, uses but if you go back to the radar systems the radar requires you to send a beam from one place to another then you need mm -hmm. to know where both places are you need to know where the receiver is and if the receiver is moving or it's an agile environment with uh, non line of sight devices and uh, many devices it becomes basically a, 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 a snake nest of uh, you know all kinds of uh, really thorny issues that you can't really address. No one has been sure. able to solve them. Sure. What we've done at the company is really come up with that invention with, through retro directivity, and we've patented this uh, in many ways to, to protect it. And this enables us to power truly devices that are in motion. Like literally, you can throw the device across the room, and it would be powered in while in flight. You know, it's that wow. fast. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we've solved and we work just in line, line of sight for all kinds of devices in, in very similarly to what you can expect from line of sight. So we have solved these things that enabled us to do this. So this is the last thing is that engineering has been trying to use the toolbox they've had for the last uh, 70, 80 years. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't really panned out for wireless power. It needed a new invention. So three things, the invention, the, the cost and the need had to happen. And that really happened beyond the year 2000. And what's been the perception that you've had to kind of work with and maybe deal with at times from the public when you talk to people about this potential and what it can possibly be? I mean, you get people out there that are complaining about having the, the signals from Wi-Fi routers and your phones causing issues and things personally. So just out of curiosity, what kind of perception do you get when you're talking about another type of wireless technology being deployed around people at a larger scale, potentially? Like, what have you heard, and what what kind of you know pushback do you usually get? Yeah, you know, when you say wireless power, 
uh, you know, through the air, people are immediately worried about safety and uh, right. truly, uh, correctly so. Uh, you know, sure. this is not this is not you know something that we should scoff at. Uh, we're also talking about potentially signals that are uh, equivalent to ten phones, not just one phone. Mm. So um, people are, are, should be worried about this uh, in general. What we have done is that the retrodirectivity technology basically. Uh, uses only the available paths, so the, the paths that have no obstructive objects. So humans okay. are great obstructing objects for, <laughs> for radio frequencies because we absorb them. So what happens is that we have a, a receiver device that sends out this beacon signal, very low mm. power signal that goes through the environment, 100, 100 times a second. And right. some of that signal would be absorbed by people, which is not an issue. The beacon is 100 times lower in energy than a Bluetooth uh, packet. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but the signals that actually reach the transmitter, the transmitter learns where they came from and basically uses the same path to send it back. And then okay. it does that for the next uh, beacon uh, one, one hundredth of a second later. So if the device moves, it's constantly refreshing. If the people move, they're constantly refreshing the system. You're always in a bubble that's protecting you from <laughs> because you're an absorptive material. Yeah. And that's what makes our technology unique. In fact, I, I, I guess that the... Uh, this capability of being inherently safe has enabled us to certify our technology in 45 countries around the world. Okay. When I say certify, meaning that we reach, we prove it, our technology to meet the same exposure levels as your Bluetooth headset. And that's what makes what we do unique. That no no yeah. one has been that's able super to interesting. create. Yeah, so that's, that's what makes our solution uh, meaningful. Fantastic. Um, so as we kind of wrap up here, I wanted to ask you, if, as we look into the future a little bit, where do you kind of see the future of sustainable power when it comes to IoT particularly going? Um, kind of what does that look like? And then at the same time, is there a difference in potential for consumer space versus not like the enterprise uh, commercial industrial type space? Um, so uh, one of the areas that we're working on is to uh, is, is establishing Kota as a wireless power standard, meaning okay. all electronics will work in the same way. So the Wi-Fi you use at home ends up to be the same Wi-Fi you use at the office or in the factory. In fact, they're compatible, mainly because that reduces the cost. So the okay. same thing would, would happen for wireless power. But the device usage, maybe the design of the devices may be much more uh, suitable or designed specifically for the for the use case. So right. we apply for you know you could have security cameras that are running on a multi watt uh, budget, and you may have um, home security systems that are running at the tens of milliwatts budget, okay. uh, and that all is working together at the same time. Um, the the uh, the ability to to have that means that we're going to see uh, a single standard helping us to to use that our technology everywhere. So you know. You expect your phone to charge at home and in the office and perhaps uh, in the airplane or a factory, whatever you work. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm very interested to kind of see where this goes for sure. But but yeah, I wanted anything else you want to expand on there? Because I think it's a really interesting topic to really think about how where this goes and what this what this enables in IoT too. So like what what things right. can we do use case wise that we weren't able to accomplish before? I mean, and that's the same with the new connectivity te technologies that come out, right? It's it's yeah. different enablement by when these new standards and these new technologies are, are available. This is the same situation. This is not just enabling things to be done better than they were before, but this is potentially enabling things that weren't possible before. Yeah, uh, for, here's, here's an example. Uh, you're there, at home, we have more devices that are powered than devices that are connected. Mm -hmm. For example, your, your Bluetooth, sorry, your toothbrush, Right, mm -hmm. electric right. toothbrush is, is a is a um, is a power device, but it's not connected. Now, wireless power, the 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 system that we're bringing, this Kota technology, not only can it power the device, but it also connects the device because we now can tell the charge of the device, the battery, even how much you're using it. Right. So, uh, not we, the, the the system can know that, right? And right, then right. that information can be passed to you. For example, uh, people, uh, you know, parents can find out if their kids are brushing their teeth and so yep, on. Yep. We're, we're going to connect everything way beyond what we thought of before. So power means connectivity 
uh, and and it's the uh, uh, if you think of the Maslow hierarchy for for uh, devices, you mm -hmm. know people think connectivity is the most important one. There's actually a more important one, which is power. But yeah. when you establish power, you also establish connectivity, and connectivity sure. can lead sure. now to data and so on. We're a yeah. very uh, data hungry society, and we're going to sure. have to have ma many more devices. Yep. Now, addressing that Cisco idea of the, not idea, the, the report about 500 billion devi IoT devices yep. right. means right. that most of these devices will be capacitor based, not battery based. Mm. And that reduces yeah. the amount of mining we have to do, right. or worrying about throwing all those batteries. So the state of sustainability is a, is a major part of our story in that we're, we're going to, you know, not only, so, you know, solve your problems with wires and batteries, but actually uh, uh, help the earth as well. Yeah. Uh, also, in, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Now, also in reducing the amount of energy needed to run all these devices. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's a very interesting space. I mean, like I said, we've had many conversations with other um, other experts around the space that are focused in other areas of sustainable IoT, and and this is one I haven't had a chance to talk a lot about because I haven't met too many people focused on it. But I I think the applications this is going to enable and the things this is going to change is super interesting to kind of just follow and understand. Um, and speaking of that, as a listener to this episode, if I want to learn more, kind of follow along with everything going on at the company, um, what what's the best way to do that? And at the same time, is there anything new coming out in the next number of months that we should be keeping an eye out for, even if you can't necessarily talk about it in detail? Absolutely. Um, our website is uh, OSSIA, it's O-S-S-I-A dot com. Okay. And, uh, you know, you can find a huge amount of information there, some uh, uh, Lots of uh, papers we publish, uh, lots of blogs, and lots of material about the company. Uh, the, um, uh, the the solutions that we we are, we are providing is to, to get everybody up to speed. Now the company is always uh, actively working uh, with many partners. Uh, many uh, some of our partners are okay for us publishing their their name and talking about what, what we do with them. But some of them want to keep this. Uh, they want to be the ones who announce that partnership. Okay, fair and, enough. Uh, but but we will publish whatever we can, uh, basically, yep. because we, you know, helping the industry see this happening helps others to also start adopting Absolutely. The technology. Absolutely. Now, this is very fascinating stuff. I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of share with our audience what you have going on and just insights in general to what this technology will enable for for the IoT space as a whole. So. This has been a very enlightening conversation. I think our audience is getting a ton of value out of it. So, so thanks again Absolutely. for your time. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. No, there's no future without wireless power. And, <laughs> and, that's, and that's what we're working on as well. I'll tell you, I mean, I have tons of cords here plugging things in. And, you know, obviously, uh, I would love to have less of that, especially at home. It would, you know, save a ton of energy and a ton of time. And I think a lot of people would agree. So I'm very excited <laughs> yeah. to see how where this goes. This is the best wire organizer you'll have. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Adam, thank you so much again for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, uh, look forward to kind of getting this out to our audience. It's going to be a great episode. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, really great having the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching that episode of the IoT for All podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to hit the bell notification so you get the latest episodes as soon as they become available. Other than that, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.